Well, hey, Union Chapel, small groups, uh, Pastor Jeff here, and I'm so excited today to just continue this series on the Sermon on the Mount, uh, just continuing to build on what we've been talking about in each of our Sunday sermons. Uh, today is uh, one that is a bit challenging for me. I'll just be honest. Uh, we are in the second week of looking at the spiritual disciplines found in uh, Richard Foster's book, The Celebration of Discipline. If you haven't picked up a copy of this book, it's a great read. Uh, it is uh, just a, a phenomenal, I would call it a Christian classic. And in Foster's book, which we began to unpack together as a congregation uh, last week, he gives us 12 uh, spiritual disciplines, the, the celebration of disciplines that, that we're to uh, employ into our, our lives. And he defines them into three different categories, the inward disciplines, the outward disciplines, and the corporate disciplines. So what we talked about last week were the inward disciplines, and just a refresher there, uh, meditation, prayer, fasting, and study, inward disciplines that focus on the, the, the character of the heart, the, the inward uh, parts of our lives. And, and today and this week, what we're looking at are the, the outward disciplines, what it looks like for us to live out these outward disciplines in our life of simplicity, of solitude, of submission, and service. And then the last section of uh, Foster's classic book talks about the corporate disciplines, which, uh, which are also challenging confession, worship, guidance, and celebration. So all packed into this phenomenal book by Richard Foster, which is a Christian classic. And so if you haven't picked this up, um, be ready because it is not light reading, um, but I just want to encourage you to process through uh, and, and to experience them. In the beginning of the book, Foster gives us these, these challenges, and he, he encourages us to not just study or learn about uh, the, the head knowledge of these, uh, these disciplines, but to experience them. And so today, and in what we talked about last week, if this has just been information for you, I want to encourage you to let it be transformation. I want to encourage you to let it go to the heart of who you are. You know, maybe uh, one of these particular uh, spiritual disciplines is a real struggle or a real challenge for you. Lean into that and wrestle with that. And by no means should you feel like you have all of these figured out because we've taken just a few minutes in a couple of weeks to talk about them. So lean into those and talk about those with your group. So this week we're going to look at the four outward spiritual disciplines of simplicity, solitude, submission, and service. Here's a key, key thought. Outward disciplines, they remind us that God's purpose for our lives extends beyond us. Get that. Outward disciplines remind us that God's purpose for our lives as believers extends beyond us. So let's dive into the four outward disciplines. The first, simplicity. Foster reminds us to always hold the kingdom of God as the number one priority in our lives. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 says it this way, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. How easy is it for us to not seek first the kingdom of God? It, it is easy. We seek first all these other things, and then the kingdom of God and, and his righteousness um, begins to uh, be bumped down the list in our busy, hectic, uh, cluttered uh, lives. Uh, it's the idea that life is so much more than possessions or endless activity or complexity. And simplicity helps us see the one thing that really matters the most, Jesus. That is what simplicity does. In our busy, hectic, crowded schedules, simplicity reminds us that we can clear away the clutter. We can clean away the hectic busyness of our world and we can live simpler lives uh, with the Lord. It means that we manage our schedules. It means that we manage our material possessions in a way that I don't feel cluttered and, and, and complicated. But when we're not feeling harassed by our, our calendars and our schedules and our belongings, we're free. We're free to live these lives that, that God has intended us to live. But instead, what do we do? 
We live this keeping up with the Joneses style of life where we're busy, 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 and we can't, not, we can't enjoy the life that's right in front of us. And when we don't enjoy the life that's right in front of us, we, we miss out on opportunities for meaningful relationships with one another. We miss out on opportunities to serve one another and to live uh, in community in a way where we connect truly how God really wants us to live. So simplicity. The second of these outward disciplines is solitude. And solitude is, is withdrawing, withdrawing away from the world and spending time with God. We see in Matthew uh, chapter 14, verse 23, uh, that Jesus, after he had dismissed them, the folks he was gathered with, he went on a mountainside by himself to pray. And later that night, he was there alone. I just love this, that it's a permission-giving idea that if Jesus needed to escape and withdraw from people around him, as much as we love people, we need to as well. We need to escape and we need to step back and we need to understand that solitude is such an important concept for us. It is a spiritual discipline. So defined, because this may be new to you, solitude is just escaping. It is, it is withdrawing away from screens, from people, from work, and sitting at the feet of Jesus and just worshiping him in solitude. And I don't know if you have a favorite place to, to be in solitude. You know, mine is on my tractor or in my truck. Just being away from people and being completely alone with the Lord and with my thoughts about his goodness and his grace and his mercy. If we're honest, solitude is tough especially if you have kids or young ones in your home, solitude can almost feel nearly impossible. I wanna encourage you to lean into the conversations with your spouse if you're in that situation or a family member and to carve out that time to intentionally find solitude. It is so critical. It is where we find healing to our souls for the busyness and the hectic schedules that we keep in our lives. And we've become so busy. And the Lord just in encourages me and reminds me all the time to get away, to establish a rhythm that will uh, give me space to be able to be away, to recharge, to, to re-plug into what he has to say. And, and be careful in times of solitude because what we often do is we pack several books, we pack lots of things we wanna study and all these things for the time of solitude when that really defeats the purpose. So find a time, find a place, and realize the purpose and the importance of solitude and escaping away so you can listen to Jesus, so you can praise him. But let me remind you this in your moments of solitude. Listen more than you speak. Invite him to speak to you. And in the rhythm of those moments, God's grace will meet you right where you are in your moments of solitude. But getting away from the pressures and the busyness of our lives will recharge, it will renew our relationship with God in a powerful way. So make space, make it a priority, and find your niche, find your spot. Maybe it's a sacred place where you go to find solitude. And you know, sometimes we um, feel bad because we can't take a whole day or a whole week of solitude. Let me encourage you to start with five minutes. Let me encourage you to start with, with 10, 15 minutes to get away uh, to a space alone to say, God, what do you want to say? What do you want to do in this moment? And establish that, that rhythm where you can listen to him because he will speak. Solitude means being alone in silence. That can be in your home. That can be in nature. It can be on a tractor. It can be wherever you find a place and an opportunity to be alone with the Lord. So where do you need to adjust your schedule in life in order to plan and, and find solitude? I have a, a rhythm of my weekly and monthly calendar that is specifically designed to help me go to the place where I find solitude and rest completely alone with the Lord. And so you need to schedule it. If that's your, uh, the place where you are in life, put it on your calendar and don't feel bad about doing that. The things that we're intentional about happen. The things that we just 
think about as maybe a good idea that we ought to do, but we never take any action steps, well, you and I both know, they all fade to the background of our lives. So find a place for solitude. The third point is submission. And we see in Luke 22, verse 42, it says this, it's Jesus, and he says, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. You know, learning how to love and listen to others is a key part of following Jesus. Laying down our lives for others in submission to them and also to the Lord is a key thing. We see that Jesus laid down his life in submission to the Father's will. You see that again in Luke 22. Father, if you're willing, take this cup, yet not my will, but yours. How many times do we need to pray that prayer? Lord, not what I want, not my will, but yours. I I surrender, I submit my day, my week, my month, my year, my life into your hands in an act of submission asking that you would take this act of surrender, that you would mold it and you would shape it and you would do what you want. Submission is a basic trust that Jesus is Lord and that he will be the Savior and the Lord of our lives, that he will take our lives as we say yes to him. And you know what's great about that is when we remind ourselves and we declare with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, it reminds me that I don't have to be. I'm not Lord of my life, and I don't have to be, and I need to to push aside that idea in submission to the Lord, and it gives us an ability to, to love Him and to love others in a very powerful way. Well, the fourth and final uh, outward element of the, the celebration of discipline is service. We see in Mark chapter 10, verse 45, for even the Son of Man, Jesus, did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Man, that, those words are just so powerful. And I know here at Union Chapel, we have something called serve. And it's a week of just going all out and all in for serving other people. But it's real easy just to focus on uh, that week or that one time where we go all in and all out for Jesus, when really this idea of service is an attitude of our heart. It's a daily approach to living. You know, Jesus didn't just lay down his life in one single moment when he's going around healing people and teaching. He lived his life in walking on the earth through an attitude and lens of service. What would your life look like if you woke up tomorrow in your home and you intentionally decided, today I'm gonna think about service as the forefront of who I am, What would it look like in your workplace? What would it look like here in our church? What would it look like in our city if service was at the forefront of who you are as a person, regularly, all the time? The way of Jesus is the way of serving. And so friends, we need to realize that. We need to realize that he has made us to serve. He has made us to have this attitude, this heart, this posture of the way of Jesus. And friends, the way of Jesus is the way of serving. Four outward disciplines, again, reminder, simplicity, solitude, submission, and service. Let's take a few minutes in our groups to talk about some questions of discussion. 